we can just start off with, uh, I guess, going over just different types of budgets. Um, typically, I mean, we, we have so many different uh, managers of all the clients we kind of work with, and a lot of them tend to have different um, ideas when it comes to budgeting. Some managers like to um, do a lot of it themselves and work with the business management and other clients like to have us do uh, everything from the budgeting side. Um, I guess uh, that will leave it open. Um, who from our team wants to touch on that a little bit? Uh, Manny, you want to talk a little bit about it? I know with Chelsea, it's one of those business manager uh, ones, right? Yeah, so they pretty much handle everything uh, numbers wise, how much budget is for hotels, how much budget for the bus, um, production, stuff like that. And then uh, it's up to me and them to just keep in constant communication about things that change, things that we don't need, things that are maybe in excess of. Um, just kind of exchange like ideas of like ways to save money with certain clients. Um, certain clients have different budgets than others. So obviously there are some managers who just want to save more money and cut corners, so to speak. But uh, at the end of the day, they want to do the best for their artists. It's just a matter of working things out with them and finding alternatives if need be and uh, just coming up with the best solution that you guys can come up with. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then uh, maybe Justin and Cotton, I know you guys were on the, uh, the opposite side of it with Juice World, um, and uh, maybe Trippy was like a little bit of a middle example, but those ones, it seems like you guys were doing almost all the budgeting, right? And then delivering it to management. Oh, I thought Kyle was going to say something. Yeah, I, for on Juice World for sure, um, we basically just started with the um, deal memos, with the income, with the totals, and they just basically said, show us what we need to be able to tour, show us what the bottom line is and what we'll go home with. And then from there, we just went in and started making adjustments, basically working backwards. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's how some managers like to do it, too. Um, uh, with Russ that we were just starting to get in, dive into, I remember they were just saying, hey, we would like to make this much, whatever you guys got to do to get this thing out on the road, just yeah. let's make sure we make X amount, everything else is good. So then that gives us freedom, but also it's a challenge because a lot of the times those numbers are unrealistic for them to make. But um, yeah, it's it, it's there's no real correct answer in the sense of like, you know, how to budget um it's all about the artists that you're working with uh that being said we're gonna dive into um our template uh which is going to take up most of the time on this week's uh, session so we have a specific template that we use um here i'm sure people have similar ones it has a lot of formulas in it um it's kind of a plug and play thing that we've been working on for the last, you know, five, six, seven years. Um, I guess we could just start right off with all, if everyone from our, the panel wants to start sharing their screen, um, we can just jump right in and start covering this thing. Uh, let me share mine. Yeah, we can get rocking with Justin talking about the MMOs and getting to the income section yeah, yeah yeah justin if you want to first yeah let's just pretend this is you know like we're about to start working on on a tour so if justin if you want to share some deal memos um and then we'll just kind of jump from there and everyone else uh we're, we'll be doing a q a too this week's q a let's try and keep questions to the budgeting uh aspect if we can like i said last week we just want to stay kind of on topic um, for whatever week we're on. So if you have budgeting questions, feel free to throw them in now. We'll cover them later as we go. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions for sure. So Justin, you can take it away. Yep, let's see. Uh, quick, somebody stall. Uh, no, it's asking me to... Mm -hmm. give permission on the deal memo no on just my computer to oh, share oh got it got it all good yeah i think that's it there you go we got it all right we're good um just gonna move that 
Um, so I have pulled up two deal memos uh, that I went through and kind of took out some of the personal information in regards to the client. Um, so the first one we're gonna look at is this one, um, which basically we're gonna go through how to read these deal memos. So if you're looking at the one on my screen right now, uh, this was for a show. It was an all in show. Uh, the guarantee or the compensation was 240,000 US dollars flat. Um, one big thing to look at is compensation on these deal memos. Everyone's deal memos look different. Uh, this one in particular is from William Morris. Uh, my suggestion would be is when you get a client, whoever their um, agent is or their agency is, get a copy of their first deal memo and go through the deal memo line for line with the agent because the, ag the agent builds this deal memo. So they're going to be able to tell you exactly what all of this information means and what's important to you as a tour manager. A lot of it's not gonna matter to you as a tour manager because some of it has to do with marketing and promo and things like that. That's for the managers to handle. But for you, the compensation, the walkout potential, things like that are important to you. So um, looking at this, um, starting from top to bottom, uh, it shows the dates, the number of shows, billing, 100% headline billing. Um, billing is huge. It's something that a lot of my artists ask me about when we get two shows. They want to know, you know, how how the marketing has been done. You know, were they the top name? If you look at the Coachella, um, Coachella is the best example of how billing is set up. The bigger the name, the bigger the artist or the, the, the better their slot is. So, the billing is going to come down to that. On this one, we had 100% headline billing because we were the only act on this show. Um, as we work our way down, you have the venue information, the buyer information, contact information, uh, production contacts, um, are, you know, who you're going to advance the show with. Uh, the show schedule, typically on these uh, deal memos, they just throw a show schedule in there and that typically is not going to be the show schedule. That's just something that they use as a format or as a guide uh, to get the deal memo together. So that's something that you always need to be updating, checking with your advance to make sure that um, it's all correct. Now we get to the compensation. Uh, for this one, like I said before, it was 240,000 US dollars. Always make sure that you know the currency. Um, if it's US dollars, if you're doing an Australian tour, typically those, those are an AUD. If you're doing something in Europe, you know, it may be in euros or uh, Great Britain pounds. Typically, these agents try to get everything to be in our currency, but sometimes it just doesn't work out like that with the promoter. So that's a huge thing to pay attention to, as well as to look at right here where it says flat. You know, we, there's no walkout potential. There's no additional amount of money that we can make on this show. Um, also, reimbursements. Again, it depends on the wording, but for this one, reimbursements was ten thousand U.S. dollars for um, for travel. Um, again, talking to your agent to make sure that that's just a ten thousand dollar check that's going to come to the artist. A lot of um, promoters will try to, at the end of the deal, say, "Hey, I need to see your travel receipts. I need to know that you actually spent ten thousand dollars." So make it very clear with your agent and with that promoter that you're just getting $10,000. And usually that, you know, on this one, it says that it's due on the 14th of November. And this show date, I don't, I don't remember what it was. I think it was like the 15th, but typically it should always come before the actual show date. If it doesn't, sometimes they roll it into the uh, final guarantee number. So moving down, uh, the guarantee is all in again. It's a flat rate of 240,000. The walkout potential is 240,000. The deposits not gonna really matter to you so much um, because the agent and the manager should be handling all of that. Um, but it is good to know if you're picking up money at the show. So, you know, I always, when I have a string of shows, I contact the uh, agent and find out, hey, is there a pickup for this show or is everything being done via wire? Is it cash pickup? Is it a check pickup? Um, I try to steer away from picking up large amounts of cash. Some artists like you to pick up cash, um, mostly rappers. Um, for the most part, everybody else is going to like uh, a wire. Uh, but, you know, like we said, cash rules everything around us. So a lot of times they want you to pick up those, those amounts of cash at the end. 
uh, keeping going down. Production, um, and I think Kyle is going to touch on this a little bit more when we get into the actual budget, but it's very important to know what you have production wise. So in this one, we have purchases to provide and pay for all sound, light, staging, and backline per artist specifications. Uh, that can vary from deal memo to deal memo. Um, pr promoters get very fickle about this because for us, we know that we want a certain console for audio, for front of house, for monitors. We want certain lights. We want certain staging. We want certain back lines. And they'll say, no, you're going to just use this little drum set that we have and these keyboards and this DJ equipment. So you have to be very firm and very precise when you ask for that. That all comes in your advance, which we'll get to in the next couple of weeks. Uh, special provisions. Um, Again, this is all information that you want to read because there will always be information in there that will pertain to you. Um, it, it's, it's, you. You try to steer away from it, but there's always going to be something in there. So just be very clear that you read your deal memo very thoroughly uh, to make sure that there's no hidden things in there that the, that the agent didn't discuss with you. The last thing you want to do is show up on a show day and they're deducting something because the agent didn't tell you about it. So just be very sure that you understand your deal memos. Um, and then I'm going to move, whoa, I'm going to move over to this one. I'm going to move this back over so you don't see everything on my screen. Um, and uh, so this one is another one. This just happened to be a private event. Um, and the reason I wanted to bring this one up, everything is the same. Um, in the rest of the, uh, the, the top half of it. Uh, if you move your way down, you'll see currency rules. It talks a little bit about the currency because this particular show was in Egypt. Um, but I wanted to come down to accommodations, air transportation and ground transport uh, and visas. These are all huge things um, that just depend on how your artist wants you to work the deal. So for this one in particular, the guarantee was 200,000 and they were to provide air transportation. Uh, it was supposed to be a first class private uh, round trip flight, uh, flexible. And then eight rooms, uh, they were supposed to pay for eight rooms, uh, ground transportation and all the visas. So this one got a little weird. And again, communication is very, very key. Um, in this particular deal memo, it says that the private flight was supposed to be fully flexible round trip. And we ran into some issues on this one and it all comes back to this deal memo. As long as you have everything in writing and that promoter or that buyer signs off on this, there's nothing they can come back on and say they didn't know about it. You're supposed to pay for this, 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 and this. Um, and it's not in either of these deal memos, but it'll you know, these deal memos can start to get a little complex. They'll start to talk about ticket scaling and facility fees and different, you know, deductions and things that could come out of your guarantee. Just read the deal memo and ask questions if you don't know it. That's the biggest thing is just understanding it. It can make or break you when you're out in the field. Um, besides that, it's not a whole lot more. Whoa, there's a name. Um, there's not a whole lot more to these uh, deal memos. Just how much money you're going to make this is your this is your guide to that show and yeah that's it yeah exactly um and you know just so in case uh the newer people here so we would be getting these deal memos from the agent so you can see at the top there it says wme um that would be the artist's agency that that this particular artist was signed to um typically they would send that you know, they would have gotten linked in with Justin through an, e you know, an email by the management team as soon as Justin started tour managing and then they send these over or have them in a portal um, that he can check and, and obtain them from. Um, awesome. So now I guess if we want to, uh, Justin, if you want to keep going on the, I don't know if you have the budget uh, sheet pulled up there. But if you want to start diving into the um, can, can somebody can can somebody else pull that up? The budget? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't I, think I, I have the most updated one. Talk. Yep, I'm gonna stop the share right. and I will uh, look from yours. Cool. 
All right, let me make this guy full screen for you. All right, so first part we're going to be going over. This is obviously we changed some of this stuff because uh, you know we don't want to put these artists on blast. But we called this band the Little Cotton and the Frosted Flakes. The numbers are all accurate, at least. Loves his uh, Frosted Flakes, so fuck it. Um, we're, first, <laughs> we're just going to go over this part here. If you want to start on that, Justin. Yep. So. Uh, Income. This is basically everything coming from your deal memo coming over into your budget. So show income is going to be those guarantees, those flat guarantees. And there, there's a couple of ways to do it. Um, generally, what I would like to see is a show income um, that has that flat rate guarantee there. And then the potential walkout um, being separate. It just gives managers a, an idea of knowing, you know, if, if we don't sell out or if we don't reach those certain numbers or goals that we need to hit, you know, this is, we're guaranteed to make this show income. Um, signing bonus, it's just depends on your artist. You know, you could get an extra amount of money. I know on Juice, uh, Juice's guarantees were uh, X amount of dollars, but on top of that, there was an additional, uh, I think like $25,000 or something like that, that was going towards production per show. So um, we would put that information in here as a signing bonus or just as an add-on for um, production. Uh, VIP income, this is typically, uh, for most artists, they do it via their record label. They have, um, what's it called? VIP meet and greets that they sell beforehand. So this is just, again, this is another form of income um, that they would have for uh, their bottom, to go towards their bottom line. Um, and then also the people that wanna get paid are the legal team and the agencies. Um, you can add their percentages in so that it automatically deducts that. Um, that way we don't have to think about it later and it's very upfront and we can see what they are going to be getting paid off of that show income uh, tab. Um, I think the next one down said taxes. Taxes are very important on this waste of potential, um, on this waste of potential budget. The taxes are there. It's, there it is. It's on a separate page. This is very, very important because a lot of people don't give you this information. A lot of people just say, hey, this is your show income. This is, these are your expenses and this is what you're going to take home. Uncle Sam disagrees with that. He wants to know, he wants his money too. So um, instead of you getting a fake number and then your business manager, hopefully your business manager is later saying, no, taxes come out of this. We will actually you know, do the calculations for you here in this budget. And you'll know pretty close as to what the taxes are that are coming out on your, um, out of your guarantees. And then the last thing, it's not on this one just because we, I, I know what tour this is and it was just separated, but something else that would go here would be um, merch. Um, you know, if, if they were wanting to roll everything into one income area, merch would be added here. That would be added to the total income. And then one additional thing uh, would be after parties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Typically if, if your, um, Agency is booking a lot of your after parties. We'll put them in here so that it goes towards your total income, which makes your bottom line look a lot better. And then on the flip side of that, you have some artists, typically rappers, who are like, nope, don't add it to that because that's my, that's my pocket money. You collect that in cash and don't tell my manager about it. Don't tell my manager, my legal team, or my agency about it because they don't want to pay the commissions on it. Yeah, exactly. I love rappers. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, that's the that's your income. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. And another thing that we deal with sometimes is, um, uh, you know, they they say, "Hey, we want this bottom number right here to be a certain <clears throat> number," and then we're like, "All right, can we put VIP income?" into the budget and merch income into the budget and they're like oh no we need to have those <laughs> separate budgets but we still need to make x amount <laughs> and that's it gets a little frustrating on our side you start to maybe have some back and forth these i see justin laughing because i think we just dealt with that and it <laughs> yeah. happens all the time um, i think i think it's important to note too on this on this just while we're diving into the template that 
this first page you guys are seeing right now is a summary page and the summary page is um, developed through all these other various tabs at the bottom here. Yeah. So there's actually formulas in all those, um, in all those summary, those, are, those numbers aren't just numbers put in and formulas that are drawn through these. So when you go over to the dates tab here, you kind of see like your, your holy grail of the tour and Chad, you can scroll over the dates there. Yep. Um, yeah, this would be the tour. Then dates would show you like the everything you know about the tour as far as like it shows you your miles to the next city, the time it's gonna take you to get there, guarantees, just so you have everything like as a quick glance when you're um starting to go through and then those guarantees populate into the um into the taxes field as well as into the income field as well. So it kind of makes your budgeting a lot more simple because you can just go edit things real quick in there and they'll switch over in the entire sheet. That's like one of the best parts about this entire budget. Yeah, yeah, and it's taken a lot, many, 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 many hours to put this thing together. Um, sure. Unfortunately, we're not going to just send this out to everyone. We this is specifically just for people who are you know actively doing wasted potential tours. So you know, a lot of you guys will probably join the team here when you do, um, and we start to you know work together. We'll we'll make sure you guys have this and know how to use it and, and kind of. Uh, I wanted to mention something on just the income part. Yeah. Um, Go ahead, Levi. Yeah, it's roughly um, tapped on to like sometimes they want to put in merch income up there or the VIP. The reason why you want to hold off on that is because on your income part, again, this is a budget. Um, it can be a working budget as well, but you want to focus on what is your hard income, like what's not going to be a variable depending on um, outside circumstance such as merchandise because you have no idea how much you're going to sell. So when you do work on this from the start of a tour, you just really just want to focus on again just your if there is vip sales already that's great but just really mainly you're just your guarantees um just things that you can you know that don't change depending on something yep yeah exactly um and that then we'll get into we'll dive in here soon and go over hotels and you know things like that um are going to change they're not going to be fixed but um next let's go to payroll we're going to let manny uh, talk a little bit about payroll and then I will move over to the payroll budget um, sheet uh, once he gets into it a little bit here. Go ahead, man. Cool. cool. Let me just get my share screen going. You can just use mine. I think you can only share one at a time. So. Yeah, I think so. All right. Um, so, yeah. You go to the payroll tab. Yep. Cool. cool. So, if you guys see. Uh, a little small, but yeah, anyway, uh, you can see everybody's like weekly pay uh, kind of for their role. So like assistant, assistant, DJ, whatever, tour manager, security, and you can see their day rate and the number of days that they're on for the tour. If you notice, there's a couple of people that are like different number of days. Uh, some people fly in and out. Some people are needed longer. Some people are needed earlier than the others. Uh, so that's why that number kind of fluctuates. Um, obviously, everybody's rate is different. So the salary due is based on how many days and the day rate. Um, so the day rate times the amount of days. Um, um, looking through, yeah, so you can kind of see the total salary that's due. So during the duration of the tour, however long they're on, that's how much they're getting paid. Um, the salary due is all right there. Um, then going to like per diem and stuff. I think that's a 35 a day rate. Yeah, 35 a day. So that's how many days for food that they're getting paid per diem that's added on to their salary. So uh, what else? You can kind of see like in the, the tab too, like on the bottom, you see like all the totals for everything due. And that's something important that when you're making these budgets to kind of update constantly so that way management can kind of be aware, uh, especially if you're sharing the document with them so that they're, they're in the loop and you're in the loop as well when they make edits. Um, everybody's stuff is pretty much pretty much self-explanatory kind of look through yeah for sure um and uh like we said you know the, the these numbers then will uh whoopsies uh these numbers will then move over to this summary page mm -hmm. 267 uh that comes from right here um we have a couple things at the bottom you know if there was just like let's say you know I had to come in and do some rehearsals or lighting tech or whatever, you know, sometimes we'll add those in here. Um, or if it's, if it's more of a salary based thing, um, we'll get more into the production management side. Um, I think that's next. Let's see what's and next. The, and the, uh, 
head back over there real quick. The uh, yeah, the payroll, the payroll tab. Yeah, the payroll tab as well. There's a payroll taxes section that you can see there. Seventeen yep, percent added on, forty-five thousand. Yeah, so yeah. that's important as well because sometimes it depends how the things are set up with your employee with the artist because sometimes they have employee or the sometimes you're an employee of that artist and sometimes you're a contract worker or ten ten ninety nine employee. So they won't necessarily pay payroll taxes if you're an independent contractor. So that may not need to go there. So it's an important conversation to have with business management because it's, you know, a $45,000 swing at the end of the day. So that definitely. Yeah, exactly. That. Yep. Yep. If they were W2 on, on here, if everyone was, uh, we would need to have it. those in there, um, you know, just to, just to have and for anybody who's not aware that per diems are um, a set amount of money that you get on top of your weekly rate to help pay for like food and other expenses and typically you try it somewhere between like 20 and 40 dollars depending on the size tour you're on in the u.s and you can go higher than that if you're on some big arena runs and then it gets bigger when you go into international because things are more expensive over there so they, they pay you a little more that's usually sometimes you can get that in cash and sometimes you get that as a uh, just on top of your check in the same in the same check Hey, yep. you know what? While while you're saying that too, Jordan, something to keep in mind: per diems are to be untaxed. So even if they decide to put it into your um, into your check, which a lot of people do, you need to make it very clear that that's that's untaxed money. If you're, you're being taxed, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. 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 Yep. Gotcha. Yeah, I've been taxed on them before, and yeah, right. Yeah, technically should be <laughs> not taxed. Um, right you definitely want to catch that early instead of later because they yeah. won't give you that money later on yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah good 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 point there um all right that's going to dive us into the next section which uh we're just going to kind of work our way down here from here um the yeah. next section is transportation and we will yeah. let uh jordan start to take the the lead on that if you want to yeah cover so i'll just start i'll just cover it in general real quick so transportation is going to cover that's really important it's like a very super probably one of the most variable parts of this budget because there's a lot of different ways you could uh you can travel so whether it's going to be a bus it's going to be flying you're renting cars and that's all going to depend on the size of the tour and management and what your what your budget looks like um, so that's an important conversation to have in advance. And a lot of times they're going to want you to put together multiple options to show what they're going to make if they do this versus if they do that. Um, so a lot of times for smaller artists, it's going to start off, hey, can we get a bus or do we need to get a van? Should we rent cars here? Should we use car service? Those are big, um, big things. And so the first so we'll start with buses. Um, that's the most common way on a lot of these, you know, mid-level runs, you're going to travel on your buses. So we have a whole bus tab here. And Chad, let's go over to the buses. Thank you. So um, this basically comes from a bus quote, which is sourced from the bus company. And you can kind of go line item by line item in the bus quote. I'll throw one up here in a couple minutes. But um, you can go line item by line item and enter it into this budget. So you can see exactly what's costing you what. And that's really helpful because what you want to do is you want to source quotes from multiple companies. So you're getting the best price, the best buses, because a lot of times I mean, the buses range in age from 2010 it could be to all the way to 2020 and those those vary in prices so artists will want to see what it, what what can i get for this what can i get for that and so to have everything broken down item by item you can see what companies are costing you more where and then you can make your decisions on where you want to save and it'll also help you try and leverage you know a better price with another company if one of them's coming in a little lower in some areas so just real quick i'll run through a little bit um the cost per day, you're starting at the top there, cost per day, bus rental, that's just the flat number of, or amount of money you're paying for the coach. And those first, that's a crew coach. So typically those are going to range anywhere from like 400 to 700 ish dollars a day, but $700 is pretty high end for it. And then star coaches are get a little higher than that, but we'll get more into that when we talk about logistics and type of buses. Um, deadhead days, uh, when you're reading a bus call, let me just pull up the bus call here, Chad, do you mind if I, I yeah, go for screen it. for a second. You gotta yeah. get you out of there. All right, cool. Yeah. Let me just pull this up because it'll be super helpful to just run through it. Um, cool. So, a lot of access here. um that's funny actually it doesn't appear oh wait yeah here we go we're good 
there we go. All right, great. So this is the bus code that I was referencing before. So you can see here, everything's separated line item by line item. And this kind of goes, goes along with the uh, budget that we already have in the, in the, or we've been sharing. Um, so as you can see, you get the cost per day for, um, they just charge you half rate on deadhead and deadhead days are the days it takes for the bus to get from where it starts to where the first day of the tour is. That's important to consider because you know buses can start in Nashville, they can start in California, and depending on where the tour is, you could really add up some costs there. But if they have to travel a super far distance, um, and then as you go down here, you get into things like satellite internet and TV. Those are all always happening and always included um, in the quote as well. Uh, driver compensation: the drivers get a flat rate per day. Overdrives. Um, overdrives. Something that's important to touch on. So, overdrives buses buses can only go 450 miles at one time before they hit an overdrive or 600 miles before they hit two overdrives and any drive any drive that's over 10 hours has to have two drivers for it so it's important to go through the mileage of your tour and know how far all your drives are so you can calculate those overdrives in advance and be able to relay that information to the budget because otherwise the big area that you could end up splurging on if you're not counting on those overdrives happening because you're basically paying the driver a double day rate so that's important. Um, hotel buyouts, those will happen on the deadhead days as well. Those are just for the driver to get a uh, hotel room or to not get a hotel room. You're basically buying them out of, uh, you're basically giving them that money to either sleep on the bus or to get the hotel for those days. Um, and then payroll fees, one other thing that's important. So you can usually have the option of getting all inclusive quotes from bus companies, or you can get quotes where you pay the driver on the road and you pay fuel on the road. So the reason that company, bus companies want you to pay the driver on the road is so they don't have to add them to their payroll and pay those payroll taxes that we were discussing for the employees before. So that's kind of just more work for you as a tour manager to have to, you know, pay the cash out to the, to the drivers. But sometimes bus companies want you to do that and that'll save them some money at the end of the day and possibly you. And then the fuel estimate at the bottom here, this is important because fuel is really another area that's super variable and you could get carried away in. Um, bus companies typically will quote you a little lower uh, um, on the estimate than, than maybe you want to. So I usually try and budget for about 95 cents a mile. This budget here is at 85 cents a mile. Um, and that's for two buses. So yeah, so this quotes for two buses opposed to opposed to one, but you get the idea of the fuel estimate here. And you could figure out how much they're quoting per mile by taking the uh, number of miles, which is 18, 325 here and dividing that or times two. And then you have your uh, fuel estimates. You can figure out that it's 80, 85 cents a mile. Anyways, going back, Chad, we can get you back to the budget here. I'm going to stop this. Cool. Yep. I will get take... you back. All right. So that pretty much covers the bus expenses in that area. And that all populates into the summary. And let's go over to the air transportation next. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. This is an area you can't, you don't really have a lot of control over. Unfortunately, you're kind of at the mercy of the prices of the flights. Um, all I could say is to, you know, book your flights early and also have a conversation with management about what they, what they want from you. You know, depending on the tour you're on, sometimes they're like, no, we want the cheapest flights. We're flying Spirit. We're flying, you know, layovers, all that kind of stuff. Sometimes you'll have, you know, management that says, no, you know, we'll fly just regular, you know, the, the main three will always fly direct. Um, We'll get more into you know that when we get to logistics, but um, I should typically typically we try and budget about three hundred to four hundred dollars per coach flight, and you know seven hundred dollars, seven fifty to a thousand for a business flight, depending on where you're going. Um, but you you really are again are at the mercy of uh, what you what the prices of the flights are. You can work with the travel agent a lot of times too to help you get better better flights and also help you save on some change fees. And those are costs that you also want to uh, incorporate. They typically, you know, will charge anywhere between like 40 to $70 a flight. Um, it, it could really vary from uh, agency to agency. I want to mention um, with air travel here, this is a very, very important part of being transparent with your client about if they want to be in business class and how that will affect their bottom line. Because a lot of artists want to, but they don't really understand or realize that, you know, if they did save maybe $7,000, that, that money's just in their pocket. Um, so during the booking process for this, is, is just very important to um, let them know their options so they just don't say, hey, I want business, and they don't really understand how that could affect their, again, their bottom line. Yeah, I mean, we've gone to book business flights to like the Middle East for artists before, and you know, even though they're making like, 
a lot of money on the show. They don't want to spend seventeen thousand dollars to fly first class round trip to uh, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, or exactly. But and or it, sometimes they do. Uh, but you don't want to assume that they do, and then just purchase that ticket and then have. Yeah, like, oh, that's shit. probably the most important thing. Until you've established like a soup, like a rapport with your artist, where like no, they just trust you, and you guys are on the same page and everything like that. Like you want to be super like. Hey, can we spend this? Can we spend this? Can we spend this? Like never just spend and then go figure it out. Like always make sure you're transparent about what you're spending, where you're spending and all that kind of stuff. The last thing on the transportation is local travel. And this is just kind of like, I mean, this is super, I mean, that's about as good as we got right now. Um, these are super tough to calculate because car service, you can, I mean, Sometimes when I'm putting together a budget, I will literally lay out every trip that I can think of for a three week run and I'll get a quote from the car service company for all those trips just so that I can have like a pretty accurate number, but I'm also kind of crazy about that. Um, so a lot of times, you know, you can just kind of, you kind of get to estimate, but that goes again, with having a conversation with your artists and management about do they want to use Ubers? Do they want to use black cars? How do they want to get to the venue? Because all that stuff's going to add up. And the earlier you have that conversation, then they know what to expect. And We'll, we'll talk about this a lot, but expectations are pretty much the most important thing. So setting expectations with management and your artists, especially with their money, um, it will take you pretty far and make sure that, you know, you live with those expectations and you deliver on what you say you're going to do. Uh, van rental in there, auto and van rental. Sometimes, sometimes, and we'll, we can talk about this in the logistics, but sometimes we'll uh, just rent cars for the crew. You can do the decent size. Uh, all right, someone's got to mute themselves. I think it's uh, Nico if you want to mute him. Um... Just give me one moment. Okay, it stopped. Um, sometimes a few bigger crews and you want to save some money and someone in the crew is comfortable driving. You know, I know we do this Bozzi a lot, like Cotton will rent a Suburban and have Cotton drive the crew and himself to the venue, save some money and just give a car to get around. So that's always a good solution to sometimes if you have like people willing to do that. Yep, yep, definitely. Anyways, and, but, uh... And these guys, sometimes they fill up with rehearsals. I know with uh, Manny, um, a lot of the times we rent, when we do rehearsals, let's say we're in Nashville for a week, we'll rent, you know, an SUV or a big van. So that, you know, can start to come into here or, or maybe it's a box truck and you have, you know, that stuff and you take away, you, add, you can add that in here. It kind of just, you know, it just depends. Um, all right, let's keep this moving along um with uh hotels um who had the hotels uh who wants to take the lead on that yeah um levi go ahead yeah hotels <clears throat> hotels can definitely make or break not just your budget but the experience um so this is this is pretty important here yeah thanks for showing that chad um for your hotels when it comes to um initially starting off what you want to figure out is when you go through those deal memos is seeing if it's a part of the deal already or if it's going to be have, have to be something that you have to book uh, so that's usually where the starting point is um, also with hotels um, you know you might just be yourself if you're on a lower scale of tour booking it um, DIY which you can do that through hotels.com which I'd recommend because then you can get some pretty perks um, for free nights the um, you can also do Airbnbs that's an option um, but usually what we do as Waste Potential, I'm, I'm sure all of us tour managers have our own travel agents that we work with. Um, so when you get your dates or your tour, you know, like right here, I see they book, you guys budgeted 150 room for 10 rooms. Um, and again, when it comes to seeing if it's a part of it or not part of your deal, um, the reason being is that because if it is, of course, everyone wants to have their own king single room. But if it's not in the artists that you can't afford to pay for everyone to have their own single um, room you're gonna have to do double rooms uh, but it kind of looks like here you guys probably did all singles for the crew um, and then off days we want to make sure everyone's comfortable as well but um, you know depending on where you're touring like in Europe or um, the US the on your off days you might only be able to get a couple showers or shower rooms for your team uh, again that's just deciding how many rooms you can afford um, and then on show days you'll see like um, Seattle whatever there's three rooms there's gonna be your day rooms so you're gonna budget in that um, and you can you can decide how many day rooms you need on show days um, pretty much figuring out if there is any shower rooms at the venue that you're playing at 
Um, Cause usually you can just let your team shower there to save on some money. But most of the time the artists in your A party, they're gonna want some day rooms so they can go relax, hang out outside of the venue, have some privacy as well. Um, when it comes to diving in to um, working with a travel agent, uh, where is it? Chad, is it cool if I take over real quick just to show something? Yeah, I should have it now. All right, this is just an example um, for the one of the you know gold link actually. Um, can you guys see my screen? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so pretty much what you do is once you get your tour, you send it to your booking agent, your travel agent, and then you'll see here like when you send this to them, you want to explain them in a nice grid like what days you want day rooms how many rooms you guys want on your travel days on here. This is a venue, this is your off day venue, so on and so forth. And then um, he'll give you some options, um, what you would like to book, um, usually get, this is all confirmed actually, this is probably at the end of the tour. But you get some options and you just look at the price again, how much that's gonna be per room. Um, and you wanna get ahead of this as well as, you know, booking the flights, because these things can go up in price pretty heavily. So when you get this, this is how you can start getting more hard numbers on what you need um, in the budget so you can update the management and the um, uh, business manager on that. Um, okay, Chad, you can go back to your budget now. Yeah, that's great. Um, some other things is when it comes to um, hotels, I wanted to mention is, you know, travel days, off days, day rooms, whatever it is, um, the quality of this, you might be only able to afford three stars, four stars, or you could actually do five stars. That's something you need to talk with your artist with and run it by management, of course, because you don't want to just pull the trigger on five star day rooms and just run the budget up $8,000. Um, so the cost and also um, when it comes to off days um, and day rooms, uh, location is also very important. You want to consider um, and that, you know, that might that can affect the budget because rooms um, that are closer to the venue could tend to be more than rather than you know getting a runner and, and getting a hotel maybe 15 minutes away um, that's also something we can talk about when it comes to contingency um, uh, and also just going back and forth with management um, and the artist is something that occurs a lot um, because say the um, the artist, oh, sorry, I'm still sharing. Um, yeah, the uh, the artist, you know, he, again, when it comes to like the business class kind of stuff, he might want his own five-star rooms. And you could be like, oh, that's all great and dandy. But again, you know, you gotta go, you gotta tell management like, hey, he really wants this. And you might have a push and pull kind of scenario. But at the end of the day, management's gonna have to final say because it's their artist and they'll have to talk to him as well. You're just there to be a medium and let them know about the numbers. Um, I think, I don't know if I missed anything else, guys, go ahead and touch on. Uh, just, just important to note that and always like, think about the taxes that you're going to spend at these hotels too, because right now I know we just put in here $150 a room, but like that's assuming, you know, that would be including tax. So if you want to either add, you know, 15% for taxes or increase the budget per room, just make sure that that's accounted for because it'll be thousands of dollars in taxes that otherwise it's unaccounted for. And like, there's a contingency in the budget, but you, you don't want to use it at that point. So let's not, so your point is to not have to go over anywhere really. Yeah. I'd also mention too, like some hotels, you need to pay for bus parking depending on the city you're in. So you might want to account for like New York, LA, San Francisco, yeah. something like that. Um, yeah, just that was, keep in mind because it gets expensive. That's a that great was that was in the bus tab as well. I think we just put like, we typically put like a hundred dollars a day into a standard. Yeah. Um, that's important to keep in mind. Yeah. Cause I mean, you typically won't use it, but I mean, that way you have $5,800 built in there for parking just in case, you know, in case, I mean, it makes sense to anybody who explained it to, to you, explain it to you like, Oh, it's a hundred bucks a day. Okay. Standard. But like if something happens and you know, you don't use it ever, but then you get a ticket one day for parking somewhere. Well, you already had that in the budget for parking. So now it doesn't screw your budget. Yeah. Um, another right, better question. to over budget than under budget. <laughs> yeah, hundred um, percent. Another question here on the bus parking stuff for, I know Manny, you can you can take it if you want. Um, do you still call the hotels 
uh, I, you know, I can't tell you how many times we've gotten to a hotel back in the day and there was no room for buses. And then the driver right. freaks out, and the, the last thing you want to tour is a driver who's pissed at you all the time. <laughs> he's, the, he's the first one calling me on the, on the phone. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so you, you we have a travel agent still... with Chelsea. Travel. So they'll, yeah, I'll, I'll pretty much make a list, like the kind of the one that you're showing right now. Some of the hotels yeah. I'm interested in that, have, that I know have bus parking, they'll call, book it, put the money down for um, the bus parking and the hotel rooms. And I'll go check in. But that budget is what me and the travel agent came up with. Yeah. Yeah. That's a timeless thing that gets slipped through the cracks. Yeah. And it's, it's that's awesome. with Chelsea. But then when I'm with Somo. I'm calling all the hotels. Like, hey, do you guys have parking? I'm coming with a bus. Especially like in New York when you have to park in like New Jersey or something. I'll yep. call the hotel and be like, hey, I need to park a bus and a trailer or, a, a, you know, the uh, truck or whatever. A tr yeah, exactly. Something like that. Or a van with a trailer, something like that. Just give them a heads up so that when you do get there, they have parking for you and you don't show up just empty handed and then you just have to hope for the best. And because sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And know where the bus parking is. Sometimes. Correct. Not close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very, very true. Um, all right. Uh, per DMs, didn't we touch on those with payroll, correct? So um, yeah. we just put those down here when I mean, in the future budget. We'll yeah, we just keep it separate for management there, so they know, yeah. like, so management might look at it and be like, why is that number so high? And then you can explain yep. that. You don't, you don't want to build it into payroll. It's got to yeah, be its own exactly. separate This item. number right here just comes from this guy right there. So this is 35 bucks a day per guy. Yep. Um, awesome. Now we're going to get into the production manager esque roles um, of this budget. We're going to go with cotton on this stuff, um, which you can see quite a bit of expenses here. So, cotton, you can take it away. Uh, can I share my screen? Yeah, gotcha. Go for it. Oh, You guys see this? Cool. Yeah. All right. So the first thing in budgeting um, is getting the design together, um, kind of like the deal memo. The design is what we build our production costs off of. Um, so, for example, this is a design that um, Chad designed for a tour we just did. Um, so once we design something, we give it to the artist, he approves it management likes it, <clears throat> we then send it off to the vendors to create. So if you look at the budget, um, it takes a lot of different people to create a design. So like, for example, for this artist, we had a band. Um, band needs backline and these things like that. So one of the things as a production manager is putting all these different pieces into play. So um, that includes band backline, that includes audio gear, you know, rehearsal space, lighting, trucking, fabrication, radios, um, it's a lot. Um, so once I send this design out, um, you know, we go back and forth with the vendor, um, get quotes and things, and then we put it in the budget, and then we take it to management and say, hey, uh, this is what, it's gonna cost you. Um, one of the things I like about being a PM is that uh, our job is really based off relationships. Um, a lot of vendors that work for us, uh, we give them tons of work. Um, we, we really try to keep the same vendors that way. You know, they can show a little favoritism, you can negotiate better pricing. Um, they might not charge you for everything. Um, being a PM, is really, really, really important of your relationships you build over the years with um, companies. So like, for example, um, I have all the quotes from that budget in a sheet. And uh, just to show you, you know, how things are kind of broken down. This is the backline quote, which is um, $12,000 um, for the tour. Um, and included all the gear that, you know, the drummer would need, um, keyboard player would need and things like that. Um, and then we go to audio, 
Um, obviously, this is all the audio gear, consoles, microphones, things like that. Um, if you're an artist, now every tour doesn't allow you to, you know, spend a certain amount of money. Every tour you can't carry everything, but you know, as you progress in your career and you you get the artists that can afford things, every artist wants consistency. Every artist wants a good show. Um, so sometimes you're fortunate to be able to carry things like your own audio console so your engineers can be on the same consoles every night um the same lighting rig so that the show does not change um this won't be the case all the time but for this specific budget it is the case um so for like audio um we spent thirty three thousand um four thousand um a week and then um lighting um was about forty two thousand and that, you know, contains lights, the console, you know, all cabling and things um, for the entire tour plus rehearsal. Um, what is this? This is fabrication. Now, this is the most expensive part um, because for this tour, we created an actual set. It wasn't just, you know, drum risers and uh, playing shows. It's a well thought out show. Um, so for example, this fabrication costs $120,000, uh, which is a scary number. But like I said, if you get the artist that wants to spend money on their show, which is how they make their money, um, then they will spend you know, a good amount of money on the things that they want. Um, and then we also did trucking from stage call. Sorry about that. Um, and this also varies from tour to tour. This truck or this tour was just one truck. Um, we have had tours that had, you know, four or five trucks. Um, trucking is really important. Obviously, it's the most important thing is what travels, you know, takes your gear from city to city. Um, so that's important. Um, one of the things, too, that note, like when you're doing quotes and stuff is, like, for example, for PRG, it says, this does not include trucking, shipping, immigration, customs, things like that. Um, that is very important to read, just like you do with deal memos and things, is to read the quotes and read the contracts that the vendor sends you because you don't want things to come bite you in the ass. Because typically, to be honest, vendors, because they don't own a lot of trucks, they don't have truck drivers, they would charge you more than an actual trucking company will to drop off gear. So just be mindful. I've seen it plenty of times where, you know, somebody thought that, a company was supposed to drop something off and it was a you know miscommunication and now you're sitting at rehearsals with uh no gear um it just makes you look bad upsets the artist so just be mindful that again just like deal memos is to go through these quotes and, and look obviously they put this at the the uh the bottom of the quote not saying they want you to miss it but i know some people just look at this number and then they don't read the rest um so just pay attention to that um, another thing to be mindful too is that when you're dealing with a tour that has trucks and, and things like that, um, and you're going into Canada, uh, be mindful of carnets and and paperwork. Um, obviously, this you'll learn this, and you know you can ask questions later. But um, the worst thing you want is to have three trucks go into Canada with no paperwork. Um, obviously, they won't be allowed in. But then you you know you put in jeopardy of the show and things like that. Um, so be mindful of that when you're when you're planning tours and and dealing with immigration and, and stuff like that. Um, I think what else is on here? Radios is another part. Um, communication. Obviously, every tour does not need radios. The smaller tours, um, you really don't need radios. But this was a decent sized uh, tour, so radios became important. And that's about it on invoices. Yeah. Um, but basically, say that again. Did somebody say something? Yeah. Uh, no, you're good, man. Keep going. I, I didn't know if you were done. Uh, no. Um, so, yeah, basically, once you get these the quotes and stuff, um, you put it all in the budget, and then, you know, it's, it's a lot of back and forth. Uh, I kind of hate this part, to be honest, because um, production is the first thing to get cut. Um, so it's a, in this stage, it's a lot of back and forth um, between you and management um, about the number. 
Um, but that's really it. Just, yeah, I don't think. I think um, awesome. That was great. Uh, let's. I mean, it's two p.m. now. Let's try and get close. We got a lot of questions rolling, and feel free to keep asking questions if you guys want. We're gonna get to them here in a second. Um, the last thing, if you want to stop sharing cotton, I'll go ahead and share yeah, mine. Yeah, let's do it right hey, um, Chad. Yeah. To Cotton's realm there. Um, Cotton, you can speak to this as well. Uh, when it comes to production, this is a very important thing to not um, short stick kind of thing. Like, don't you don't necessarily always want to go for the cheapest option because, um, you know, again, if you're on tour and you don't have a, a backup, you know, either whatever CDJ or – whatever it could be, if you're just going to spend mm -hmm. more money, you know, getting that, but getting that second piece out there rather than just spending it up front. And that's something that you as a TM um, will have to either sit down with management and help them understand why they need to spend the extra dollars on this. Um, and I just, I just wanted to say that one for you, Connie. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. Um, also like, you know, that's where relationships with all these vendors come into play. Let's say, you know, a piece of backline breaks or a light fucks up or the console fucks up. We have so many clients with a lot of these people that they're going to go well out of their way to make sure that goes well. If we were, if we, if, you know, we were just some random person who only does this one artist with them, they're going to, you know, not work as hard because, oh, it's only, you know, $3,000 we lost on this, but you know, to them, that could be hundreds of thousands of dollars of stuff that's gone if they break, you know, burn that bridge. Um, and I know cotton has a ton of uh, those relationships now just from PMing over, you know, the last you know few years. So um, the last thing uh, we want to touch on here, let me share my screen uh, is the contingency. Um, Contingency, it just depends on, uh, this is what a 5% contingency, you can see it up here. Um, contingency basically is accounting for uh, things that, you know, could pop up on tour. Um, I don't know if we had, did we have anyone marked on contingency on this uh, thing, guys? I don't anyone think mark? so. All you, buddy. Me? All right. I guess I'll. Um, awesome, yeah, throwing it back. Uh, yeah, contingency. I mean, this is one thing that a lot of budgets <clears throat> that we see, uh, maybe the business manager sends over, uh, a lot of people, I don't really see account for it. And when they do, people have different opinions on what, um, the percentage should be. Uh, ideally on our side, we want to have it, you know, be padded enough to, you know, have some mishaps or let's say we were at rehearsals and we needed the props, you know, to come over and we forgot to confirm trucking with them, you know, that's, they ended up sending some, you know, replacements or the props or whatever over that type of stuff can uh, technically fall under here. At the end of the day, it, do it doesn't really matter what it is as long as uh, this bottom line um, is what they want it to be this thing you know this this helps us out um any other contingency notes i just want to i don't want to spend too long on it but um anyone have anything just, just the, the bottom the bottom line there includes the contingency so that number that they're yeah, seeing is included in that so i mean you're ideally already hoping to be forty thousand dollars under that or over that number as far as their profit yeah and at the end of the day you're not you're not really expecting to spend that forty thousand dollars ideally but it's there in case in case you and, and if, as you start to deal with artists and managers that are new, they they don't understand contingency. They're gonna be like, "Well, why are we why are we setting aside in this case forty thousand dollars for what ifs?" Yeah, and like somebody said smart. before, like somebody said before, you know, you know, I've been out with artists that say at the beginning of tour, like, "I don't want any suites," you know, "I want to stay in regular hotel rooms." Just and then we get to the second date, and rappers start wanting suites in every city. So now we go from a $250 budget per room to a $600 budget. That contingency yep. will and help. And the managers want suites. And then the manager wants suites. And then the manager's brother comes on tour and he wants a suite. And then the artist- But he's had a suite the whole this. time that he wasn't <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I mean, yeah. So it just, it's, it's just, it's, it's a just in case. And I tell a lot of managers like, yo, I'm going to bring, my plan is to bring this money back home to you. I don't plan to spend this 40,000, 
but just in case, let's be safe because I'd rather you know that you're going to take home in this case 1.2 million and then take home an additional 40,000 as opposed to that 1.2 turning into 1.6. Um, yeah. I wanted to mention, Chad, real quick, are you able to show them where that number comes from? Like, because it's coming from the, um, the, the top income portion. Um, yeah. So that total income, 5% um, of that is where your contingency is coming from. And if you want to, contingency is pretty much any, you know, any shit that you didn't necessarily budget for. That's, that's what it is. Um, and back to like transportation, this happens pretty frequently. Like one of the things is double drives. Um, for example, if you, as an artist, you know, you get, have an off day um, and you, you couldn't make it to the next city, um, to, to enjoy your off day, I'm saying Colorado. So um, he, you stop like midway in fun fuck of Kansas, right? Um, but say two days before that, the artist changes his mind. He's like, yeah, I actually want to go all the way. I want to spend the money. That's an example of contingency kind of right there. Just a double drive that wasn't initially planned for. Yep. Hey, Chad, I just saw something too. Can you scroll up to the income? Yeah. Since we're clarifying where the contingency number comes from, it's Be actually clear. coming from this number, right? It's actually coming from the expenses, I believe, correct? G57. G57. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's coming um, from, uh, it's coming from, like, yeah, the total expenses of everything. Of the whole thing, exactly. Yeah, it's coming from that 782 number. Yeah. Not, just per, not just production of miscellaneous, but production per diem, payroll. Buses. Um, yeah. Because the um, bus could break down. Any number of things could happen to those buses. Yep. Yeah, because these are expenses as well. Um, I, I just tried to control your screen, Chad, and I was figuring out why I wasn't moving. <laughs> but, um, just real quick, I wanted to point this out, too. In the income section where it says less legal commission, less agency commission, that is off of that just the show income, signing bonus, VIP income. That comes off of that number. Um uh, off of the show income number. And the reason I say that is because that is not to be confused with. They're not taking their money after all of these expenses, after production expenses, after um, bus expenses. They're taking their money off the top. So just to but be management, clear, say that management again. Will, management will typically take it off, take their cut at the end of the day once off the profit. Yeah. yeah. So that, so but that, it, but that's like not always included in our budgets, I guess. Yeah. So it just that's that's just another thing to be very clear on because that that is something that will change from from artist to artist, manager to manager, business manager to business manager, who's taking their money when. And most people are going to take it um, off the top. They don't they don't care what you, you know what the end number is. They just want their money off the top. Yeah, exactly. Um, and a lot of these numbers change. You know, like in the end of the day, this is just a super rough um budget uh that we changed some numbers on but you know in the end of the day all this stuff comes from clarity with your manager um and your business manager so as long as those relationships are good you guys can work on these type of things together figure all this stuff out um and yeah that'll wrap up our you know budget template uh we have a bunch of questions coming in i want to just make sure we start knocking these guys out um, so everyone can get out of here and do Mother's Day stuff if they need to. Um, let's see, let me scroll back up here and see where we first question here. Um, Stitch had a question. Uh, Stitch said, can you give possible examples of a pushback from management or, bump or cuts on the road that you may have had to make? Um, anyone specific wanna take this question? Cotton, you want to take this one? This, this, you know, could be some production manager cuts or something like that if you've had to deal with anything. Um, I'm trying to find the question. I couldn't really hear you. Um, it's up 111, it was asked. I got it. Can you give a possible example of pushback? I mean, the pushback um, comes from all the time, right? Like, even just like... Yeah, special. pushback is, can come from anything. Um... Example of pushback. 
I mean, sometimes you can be in the middle of a tour and a, a management might say that, hey, um, this isn't – kind of. Oh, that's a good question. I mean, a pushback we've had that I can think For of. For production. Like, on production side was like, you know, the manager wants uh, a bunch of special effects or the artist wants it. You know, let's say they want CO2 and you're crunching the budget for the number that they wanted to make. You plug in those CO2 numbers and they're not, you know, it's, it's not coming in where they, what they want to make. Right. I mean, right. just anything or, like It could that. be like times on like a one-off where you're doing a show, like in a college show in the middle of nowhere and the artist wants pyro and like, it's going to cost you a bunch of money to get the pyro there because the truck has to drive from a major city in the middle of the nowhere. It's going to cost uh, way too much into the guarantee and then that's the pushback you have to give and let them know that it's going to cut into their budget x amount of money so that you can be transparent and they know what to expect at the end of the day if they want to go that route yeah yeah pushbacks are pretty inevitable um you know bumps in the road like uh cuts you've had to make on the road um maybe if one thing goes way up like let's say the whole you know the sweet thing justin was talking about um, then maybe if they, if they're really, you know, firm on trying to make a certain amount of money, you might have to start thinking about, you know, maybe we can send back uh, some lights or maybe we can, you know, you know, consolidate the truck pack or just something. I mean, those are really, those, those could turn into big issues on the road, but, uh, they're not the most common. That's for sure. Um, a lot of time you, a lot of time you get pushed back on things that like you were just saying, Chad, that you just can't like there's. There's no way to repack the trucks. You know, you yeah. need all of those lights. You need that spare light out there. So yeah, exactly. sometimes you, you, just, you just have to be prepared to have that conversation back with management. Like, hey, in order yeah. for us to have a successful run, we can't do that. Yeah. Uh, and in the end of the day, that, you know, helps the, the relationship with the management. Um, uh, hopefully they trust us to the point where they are like, all right, you know, you guys know what you're doing. We're going to just take your advice. But a lot of time, you know, sometimes that's not the case either. Um, hey, someone has mentioned a stitch because uh, you're actually on the tour, dude. Is a perfect example um, was when we had a shit ton of merch boxes show up out of nowhere, and management they probably, you know, I kept going back and forth with him trying to get rid of some of this stuff, but he was mm -hmm. so certain that it was going to sell. And I think you remember kind of how that all the all that fucking merch was just kind of very annoying to deal with all the time. Was that Tyler the Crater run? Uh, no, this is our headline in Europe. Oh, in Europe. Yep, yep, yep. Um, Fuck the pack ups. Yeah. You want me to spotlight the people so they can ask the question? Yeah, yeah. That's. Uh, All right, cool. Yeah, let's do that. Um, uh, let's see. Let's call out who's next. Uh, let's go to uh, Douglas. Did you have any questions specifically about versus deals or anything? Uh, can you hear me yep uh not like a specific question just like to kind of just further like my better understanding of it obviously guarantee is like a flat rate that the artist is going to get for the show regardless and then from kind of how i understand the versus deal it's like depending on the ticket sales what amount is greater the guarantee or some sort of percentage of sales they end up getting that amount if i have the right understanding uh yeah yeah, versus deals are, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, but a lot of versus deals I've seen were uh, on the come up. Um, a lot of these smaller bar cap rooms um, mm -hmm. typically do a lot of versus deals, um, the, you know, with a small guarantee. Um, and then when you break into that, you know, percentage, it's basically whatever amount is greater. So, you know, 75% versus five grand so mm -hmm. you're gonna at least have five grand you're gonna walk away with if the ticket sales do really well and approach a sellout then that amount of money if it equals more than five grand you're just gonna take 75 percent of it um it's just a you know a strategy the agent uses to basically make sure the promoter doesn't make more than the artist um right but a lot of times there's like a there's a promoter profit built into the like as an expense built into the those deals um it's important to look at those versus deals really closely because it um it'll be versus like a certain percentage of like right. it'll be either be net sales or it could be uh net sales minus or it could be gross sales it could be a lot mm -hmm. of different things 
and looking at those expenses and the um, that like especially the advertising costs and stuff like that, um, that'll be important as well. Because sometimes like if your show sells out like in an instant, your other advertising costs shouldn't be through the roof. So I mean, those are things right. to talk about. A lot of times you're not really going to be able to debate too much with the promoter that night, but you can go back to your agent and say, hey, this looked a little fishy. Um, and they can sort it out at the end of the day, you know, the agency will, it will right the wrong, but, mm -hmm. uh, but make sure that, you know, you're on top of it and at least raising the issue to the, to the agency. So they know. Yeah. And we could start to touch on that stuff in the settling. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're going to unsettling for sure. You know, with advertising being beefed up and whatnot. Just uh, to talk right. back to Thank budgeting you. real quick. Um, if you are in that circumstance, is if, if you have those type of deals, the way to kind of go about budgeting that initially is, um, giving management and business management um, the different outcomes of the percentage. So you just have like a, you know, a 60, 75, 80, 90, whatever it is, just give them those outcomes. That's just how budgeting works for that. Yeah. Yep. Um, let's uh, Sam Shuban Shuback, uh, if you want to unmute yourself, I saw you had a question. <laughs> um, it actually, it looked like it was just a statement. <laughs> But. I had a couple of them. Um, so I guess one of the things was with the um, with the con contingency. Um, would that include like the cost of if someone like leaves the tour in the middle of the tour for like illness or something like that to like then restaff or are you not restaffing someone else? Like how does that? Hmm. Um. As far as that, that's probably more of a payroll uh, answer, right, guys? Um, I mean, I mean, unless the budget's already in there. Unless you're, you know, you're, the, the cost for bringing them out there, I mean, I guess that would file into the contingency. Right? I, I think it's a case by case thing. Like, you know, if, if, if your keyboard player has a family member that passes away and they need to, you know, go home, a lot of times your artist will say, hey, you know, it's a circumstance where. They have to go. Let's fly them home. Let's bring somebody else in. That stuff would fall under your contingency because you've already budgeted for three flights for the keyboard player. One, two tour, one or one to rehearsal, one to the first show day, and one flight home at the end. So, um, I, I think I think that that's kind of a case by case basis thing. Okay, and then my other question was like, as far as the hotels, like, are you always booking everyone in one hotel? Or are you sometimes splitting between different budget hotels in the same, like if they're like two blocks away and you have to kind of fit that in that budget, is that something that you're doing? Uh, I'll touch on that real quick because um, logistics are one of my favorite things. Um, so yeah, we'll definitely split up hotels into different parties. A lot of times when the tours get bigger, you'll have A party, B party, even a C party and go on. But uh, a party is typically your principal, your artist, and like security, maybe it's photographer, it's assistant. Uh, sometimes it's tour manager, sometimes it's not. It really depends on your relationship with the artist and what, you, and whether or not you're a production manager at the venue, things like that. But yeah, you'll separate them and you'll have an a party hotel that'll typically be like your five star hotel or whatever hotel is up to the artist standards. And then you'll put your crew in, you know, not in a bad hotel, but you'll put your crew in more like a, a brand name like budget friendly hotel that's really close to the venue um that's something we'll talk about logistics as well but distance to the venue is is something you want to consider always and you always try and make them as close as you can as long as you uh have the budget to do so awesome um I, is that your last question sam yep that's all i had awesome thanks appreciate those um let's go to alonzo goodman uh if you want to unmute yourself hey what's going on guys what up man i'm cool um yeah so my question was um back to like private parties um after i guess like clubs and stuff is that considered um something where like an artist won't have to pay taxes <laughs> on because it's cash or how does that work Mr. After Party Cotton, take it. Um, yeah, typically they don't pay taxes because it's in cash. So it's kind of like quick money that they just pocket it right after the party. All right, cool. Thank you. Yep. Um, let's keep rolling. Um, 
Sam had the question of tour managers usually being 1099 or W2. Um, that just depends on the scenario. Um, we have, so there's wasted potential and wasted potential touring. So wasted potential touring is the uh, company we use to have all of us get paid and, um, you know, uh, basically just get paid for whatever gigs we're doing. Um, that enables us because we have workers comp and every, everything for our people we send out on the road. That enables us to be classified as 1099s, not W-2s by the artist, meaning that they won't be uh, taking taxes out of our pay. Um, sometimes that's a good thing. Uh, most of the time it's a good thing. It's how we usually prefer for it to be done. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that kind of answers that question. Um, let's see, what's the next one here? Uh, contingency, uh, Douglas, I saw you had a question for larger size tours with a lot of uh, travel logistics, if you wanted to ask that one. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I was just curious, um, obviously if you guys use a booking agent, which, or excuse me, a travel agent, not a booking agent, of course you have booking agents, but if you're using travel agents for larger size tours, when it comes to booking a lot of hotels, a lot of different things of that nature. And also to go along with that, like, cause obviously with hotels, you have to put down deposits, but I think Manny mentioned it that he said with Chelsea, the travel agent is putting down the deposits for the hotels, but I'm sure it's probably different on a case to case basis, depending on the tour. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Manny, you want to touch on that at all? But I mean, it, you pretty much hit it on the head. Yeah. You guys pretty yeah. much touched it. Yeah. Like I, like I said before, though, like I'll, I'll send like the hotels that we're looking to stay in, whether the artist wants to be closer to the venue or in a different spot, like say if it's an off day or something like that, and they want to be close to the mall, maybe to an airport, they got to catch a flight or something like that. I'll send that list to the travel agent and they'll yay or nay it. Um, and then go from there. But it's pretty much all set up that way. I wanted to mention real quick on the, with the agents and stuff. Um, if you use travel agents to book flights, they are charging you a fee, maybe $50 a flight or whatever. If you're using them to book hotels, um, the hotel pays them. So you don't pay fees when it comes to them booking your hotels. That's a good point. Yeah, um, you can afford it. If you can afford it and you can convince your management to do it, yeah. use, a travel, use a travel agent every time. 100%. But we'll talk about that in logistics and we'll talk about the grids we use to send over to it and how we get everything sorted out with them so everything's smooth. Yep. Uh, yeah, Tori asked the same question. Uh, travel agents and bookings. Yep. We, we try to do it uh, every time if we can. Uh, Malachi, you had a good question. Um, feel free to unmute, you, unmute yourself. Hey, Malachi. Hey, what's up, guys? Um, actually, had several kind of questions. I don't remember which one I actually wrote down. If you can just remind me. Yeah, yeah. You were talking about what happens with uh, unexpected um, expenses if there's a cash. Oh, cash. yes, yes. If there's any uh, petty cash or anything like that, that that you guys give you or that you budget into a tour and things like that and what happens with overages. I think you covered some of that stuff already. <laughs> Yeah, we talked about contingency, but also uh, we didn't really address uh, float um, money. Um, if uh, uh, who hasn't talked in a minute, Justin, if you wanna you wanna talk about float and what exactly that is for a second. Um, so float is a gift and a curse. Um, it is cash that you would have on the road, a cash float that you would have um, for anything, <laughs> anything that's needed. Um, it's, it's basically petty cash. It's very, very important because um, it's not something that's, it's not like a credit card where it's tracked automatically. Um, you have to be very, very diligent in your tracking system for float. Uh, what I typically do is I have a um, spreadsheet that I have that I start with a deposit at the very top. So it says XXX artist has given me $5,000 cash and any cash that I give out on the road goes through that, um, through that, through that grid, uh, whether it's for reimbursing somebody for an Uber 
when I, you know, give out cash per diems, all of that goes on that grid. And it's so important. A lot of artists don't like giving cash because they just feel like they, rappers, know that they can do a lot of under the table stuff with it. Um, and so at the beginning, you just have to reassure them, like, you give me $5,000 in cash, I'm going to give you $5,000 worth of receipts, even if they're receipts that you have to make up. Not, not make up, but, you know, if you're giving cash per diems, you know, you'll have everyone sign off that they receive $240 in cash uh, from you for per diems for the week. Um, and then you'll submit that to management at the end. So definitely have petty cash. Again, I say it's the gift and the curse because you have to be very diligent in your tracking, but I typically won't go out on tour without cash because what ends up happening is you get on the road, you have an artist that has a credit card that they're using for hotels or something like that. Their card declines because they you know, run up $50,000 worth of charges and business manager didn't pay it. I'm not putting it on my card or at least I'm not putting it on my card without having some kind of security on the back end. So um, having petty cash is huge. Uh, a lot of times your, your bus drivers also need float. Not a lot of times, but all times they need float. Um, if you're paying for fuel on the road, um, what I typically do is I give bus drivers X amount of dollars. Usually I give them like $2,000, $3,000 at a time. And it's the same thing for them as it is for me to the artist. I'm giving you $3,000. You're either going to give me back cash or you're going to give me $3,000 worth of receipts because I'm going to turn around and give those receipts back to uh, the business manager. So um, yeah. float is very important. You can find yourself in a really bad position, a really bad debt um, if you don't have float, um, and then you're waiting for your artist to reimburse you, um, which is always horrible at times. Uh, I wanted to yeah. mention when it comes to float, pre tour usually business management you know can pull cash out for you, or they deposit it to your account. And you pull it out, and during tour, it usually comes from merch income. Yeah, float. Uh, thanks for bringing that up, Malachi. Float's definitely something. Awesome. To cover. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Uh, Braden Jackson, if you want to unmute yourself, I saw you had a question too. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay. So, when a tour has like a tight budget, what's typically the first thing that you scale back on, like lodging, catering, per diem, and what are some things you should like never compromise on? Salary. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's always one that is in conversation, um, especially with uh, managers that don't manage a number of acts. Um, I notice that with managers, if they just manage one act, they're like, oh, yeah, the you know lighting guy shouldn't make two grand a week. He should be making a thousand a week. He should just be happy to be out here. And then, you know, you got to have those. <laughs> um, I don't know. What do you guys think? The first thing to scale back if the tour isn't out yet, it's typically the production. They're like, oh, two less lights, four less lights, 12 less lights. And then um, uh, what else you guys? Well, you, you, scale back the, you scale back the production, then it kind of domino effects. Because you scale back production, you scale back the crew size. If you scale back the crew size, you can scale back the transportation needed. So I yeah. think at the end of the day, it kind of does come yeah. down to yeah. production, really. Because as long as you change that, then everything else falls in line. Yeah. And it's important as well when you're budgeting, like you have to know how many people are in your crew before you can really just put together a solid budget because those numbers are going to vary so much. I mean, you saw on the budget, how, how much one person's salary could affect like the overall budget. So, I mean, having those two or three people different, you know, could be the difference between, you know, $75,000. So that's a lot of, it's a lot of money. Um, yep. And also, it also affects your, how you travel and your transportation and your buses and all that. Right, and it's touching on like what Jordan said to like by the amount of crew, like some tours I've been on where they'll put two to a room or get a suite and three or four to a room, depending on how the lodging is in the room, where there's maybe two beds and like a sofa couch, you know what I mean? Like something like that. Um, so they'll cut prices on like lodging and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I, I mean, we try not to to scale back on the salaries like, like Justin joked around, but, but I mean, we like, it's hard, man. You got to have those conversations because those are typically the first thing the manager wants to scale back on, but having, that's the good part of being a part of wasted potential too, is like, 
we kind of we a lot of those people on the production crew are also parts of wasted so we want to have each other's back and be like oh you know the monitor guy should be getting paid this lighting guy should be getting paid that and as long as you can convince the manager that you know they agree with it um that's probably the part we try not to scale back from too much if possible uh we got a bunch more coming in so let's keep it rolling nico uh I saw you, I had a question about hotels getting yep. in the night before. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, what's up guys? Thanks again for doing this. Um, I'll try and keep it brief because I know we have a lot of questions. Uh, as far as budgeting goes for hotels, um, usually when you, let's say like you load out at midnight and you have a bus call at 2 a.m. and you have a six hour drive, you get to the next city by 8 a.m. It's well before check-in time. You can't get a driver into a room. Do you budget for have paying an extra night before uh, so that you can get that driver directly into the room? And what do you do if you can't, if you don't have the budget to allow that? Like, do you have to have your, your bus sit at the venue until 8 a.m. and then drive and get to the venue at, you know, 2 p.m. and load in? Or I mean, it, it, how do you like handle like doing that if you have to load in at like, you know, 10 a.m. or something? I just... I just don't know how to handle that because on my last tour, I, I did, we had to do bus calls at 8 a.m. because we just got, couldn't afford to get a two nights for the driver or for the crew or whatever. Because getting to a, a, a venue at 9 a.m., you know, check-in time is at 2 p.m. or whatever. Like, how do you how do you deal with that? That's the biggest thing that I found. Welcome, yeah. welcome to being a tour manager. <laughs> that's 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 i mean that's one of for me that's going to be the bus drivers for some reason always seem to be the most difficult people on the road yeah. uh, because they you know you you have guidelines that you have to be within to keep your tour running you have to load out by a certain time you have to load in by a certain time in the next city the last city uh has another tour coming in the next day so you have to be out of the you know off of the grounds by six o'clock so just timing it, it's going to change every day. As far as booking the night before, most managers are not going to let you do that. Mm -hmm. um, they, they just, they don't see, they don't understand why um, they would pay for an extra night. Now, a good way to battle that is to let them know if they, if you guys leave the night before and you get to the next city, that overdrive kicks in you're going to be upset for taking an overdrive instead of just booking an additional night of the hotel for a hundred dollars, $125 for your bus driver. Um, so it, it does change from day to day. If you have the benefit of using a travel agent, which I, I think we all can agree being able to use a travel agent is great. Rely on your travel agents relationships a lot, because a lot of times when they're booking with these hotels and they have relationships with the sales managers, they can get these sales managers to just guarantee them a room. Or if for some reason, like my travel agent, she's calling every day to see what the occupancy is for the, for the next day. Mm -hmm. If they're at 75% occupancy, she knows when we get there, we'll be able to check not only the bus driver in, but the day rooms in. But if they're getting up towards 95% occupancy, then as a tour manager, that's where you have to say, okay, could I potentially take an overdrive? Or should I just book this additional night? And of course, you want to go to management and say, hey, these are the two situations that we're in. Another good thing is, um, I don't remember what the bus quote was that we threw up, but you know, Wasted has a few bus companies that we work with, as well as a few drivers. A lot of these drivers are, are, aren't assholes, for lack of better terms. Yeah. They, they, will, they don't have a problem just stretching out on the front couch of the bus um, if their room isn't ready. So if you develop a relationship with them, they get a couple overdrives somewhere where it actually makes sense. Like they'll work with you a little bit, but it's, it's, it literally changes from day to day. Mm -hmm. well, definitely. Good insight. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, Gianna, uh, saw you had a question about insurance. Um, if you want to mute. Hi there, can you hear me? Yep. So I yeah. saw on the budget sheet under the production miscellaneous, there was a line for insurance, but it was blank. So I was wondering how that's budgeted in, who handles that? Is that through the basic potential? Is that through the band's agent? Like how, how does that all factor in? Um, typically, um, it's blank because you, we really never had to add um, as, as far as come out of pocket for that. But a lot of times, 
vendors would require you to have a COI for the gear. Um, but then the business manager would just add the vendor to the, the COI that they already have. Um, so it doesn't really cost anything. That's why normally it's blank. Um, but just be mindful. A lot of vendors, like the bus, sometimes, well, bus companies typically have their own insurance, but like PRG, Eighth Day, when the gear leaves their shop, they require the artist to protect it from water damage, theft, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but typically that doesn't really cost if the artists themselves already have um, the insurance. Got and it. if business management wants to toss in like tour insurance, then they could toss in the cost of tour insurance, but that's handled by all like by business management. We don't really deal with a lot of that um, on our end. So once we send the budget over to business management, you know, the, sometimes they'll mark it up and they'll send it back. It all depends on the kind of the relationship you have with them. Real quick, something to mention on business management also is a lot of, after the tour is over, you'll, they'll typically like calculate everything based on the credit cards that come in, the reports you sent them, and they'll develop like what the final numbers were and they'll put together what's called the budget versus actual. So you can see like what you budgeted versus what the actual costs were. And that's where you see kind of, that's kind of you getting your grade as your, as a tour manager and your, on your financial uh, skills. So that's important. And, you know, just know that sometimes business management is very diligent sometimes they're not but uh regardless you always want to try and you know be on point with that yeah it's definitely something we didn't cover too much was be the biz, uh the actual versus the budget um that stuff always ends up coming up at some point I, i've seen it even come up like months months and months after a tour they'll send you a random thing and be like oh shit i forgot about that um thank you gianna though that was uh good questions um Let's go to uh, Sam and Tori had kind of this a similar question of just what is a production manager's role when it comes to a one-off festival? Uh, Con, you want to do a quick answer on that and we'll just keep it rolling? Um, I mean, the role doesn't really change. Um, obviously, a one-off festival, you don't typically carry production unless you're you know, pretty high in the bill. Um, but basically it's the same. I mean, you get there and you make sure the artists and your crew have everything they need um, to do a show. So I, I don't think the, the role changes. Uh, you might have less to do, um, but the, the main thing is just making sure all the production elements are in place um, so you guys can do their job and the artists can have the show. Yep. Uh, I feel your, your role maybe changes a little bit in the advanced process too, right? Or not really? um as far as like what you're looking for in the events and what you're trying to like accomplish or you know just as far as like change over times and that stuff yeah i mean that that kind of changes but then i i, I personally think festivals to me are kind of easier um because there's less things to worry about as far as um i don't have to worry about like it's hard to explain to me i like festivals i don't have to worry about how gear is getting there typically the gear is in decent condition you know what you're getting um so like yeah i guess the advanced changes a little bit but i don't think it's a major change to the point where like it's a big difference from a one-off and a tour show to me yep but um I'm gonna, keep it, I'm gonna keep it rolling uh we're got a lot more here um i'm just gonna start cruising through a couple of these that are a little more general um this one says do you factor in addition cost um to strengthen security on high production tours. Uh, yes, we just add that to the payroll. Um, I think this one had like this, this template that we just used had like four security guards. So rap tours, you know, it just depends, but yes, that, that answers. Yes. Um, uh, Edel or Edel uh, says, does principal mean the artists? Correct. Um, sorry, we forgot to mention that Jordan likes calling the artist the principal. It's just some weird fetish she has. Um, what are those shower rooms and day rooms? Um, shower, oh, uh, so Levi, you want to talk about re just real quick what a shower room is and what a day room is? Yeah, so pretty much um, shower rooms are like, on, again, on off days, uh, you get maybe a couple double rooms or something, but it's for the whole crew, the whole party, um, usually the, the the principal or the you know your main artist has his own room but for the rest of the team such as the crew and the band they get show they get um just these shower rooms so they just go in off the tour bus or whatever you are 
um, rotate through the showers and you can hang out or just kick it out of there. But just they're just literally just shower for on off days. Uh, day rooms are usually on show days where, um, yeah, you, you get the artist a or the band um, a couple of day rooms where they can escape the bus and the venue, getting to go to a hotel and kind of hang out for the day. Uh, they can also shower there pre and post show um, to get ready and um, just hang out. Awesome. Uh, Jake, uh, if you want to unmute yourself, I'll let you take your question here. Seems like it's a little quiet. Uh, one second. Hey, is this better? Yeah, yeah, much better. Check. You're good. Hello. We can hear. Sweet. Um, can hear. Yeah, my question is just, as an independent TM, um, how do you vet sort of touring resources to find background info, reviews, recommendations for vendors or uh, travel agents or other outsourced sort of assets and labor? That's a good question. Um, it definitely gets hard when you're independent because uh, you, you don't, you know, if you give someone a shot and they fuck up, it's already almost too late sometimes because you might lose the gig. Um, we have just through all of the different clientele we've had and all the touring that all of us have done, we have kind of a pool of different vendors and stuff we've worked with. Um, as far as, I mean, and, and anyone who comes in with Wasted, we tend to, tend to give those resources to. Uh, does anyone have any advice for independent tour managers? So let's just say, you know, someone on their own, well, how do they find people in the touring world? I feel like you just have to vet the people through, I mean, I mean the whole like industry, I feel like it's a pretty small world at the end of the day. And I feel like it's word of mouth um that spreads quickest so i feel like you know re reaching out to the people that your your colleagues and like your friends that are in the industry and asking them you know who they use for this or for that and what experiences they've had because you know over the as soon as you start touring you know you'll have experiences that are positive and negative and you know you always remember those things and those are good to pass along i think like that's really the best way you can get recommendations for that kind of stuff and it's just trial and error at the end of the day when you don't have that you just gotta give it a shot right you know? if it ain't broke don't fix it hey jake um have you been on a support act tour? Yeah, yeah, I've been on a support act tour. I've been on some headline tours as well. Right on. Yeah, usually just asking the headline tour manager too. Um, I found that to be pretty effective on the early days. Yeah, for, yeah, for sure. And if you have any questions, you know, of like stuff or intros you need, feel free to reach out to us. We, we can help you out with that. We, we try Appreciate not to that. do as much because, uh, you know, like we, let's say you need some vendor we don't know you it's hard for us to give that advice because then we our name right. is stamped on it you fuck up the vendor's like why did you do that uh obviously if you're in this panel you're you're ahead of the curve so we'd be happy to help um Word. thank you guys hey, hey, Ted, I'd, I'd also like to add on to to his question if yeah. you uh if it's if it's too good to be true or it seems too good to be true it's likely it's they have trash equipment I mean, you don't want to be out <laughs> yeah, there with if the price CBS is, equipment. We've yeah. Yeah. So yeah. true. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. Yeah, very true. Awesome. Thank you, Jake. Um, let's keep it. Yeah, thank you, guys. Um, let's take uh, – try and keep crushing through this. We'll take uh, – let's see. Uh, we already answered Paul's question. Um Uh, Tobin said, who's paying our per diems? Where does that money come from? Uh, the tour manager would pay that. So, you know, if Justin was your tour manager, he'd approach you, give you uh, 35 bucks. He'd have a sheet, you know, you sign it, you get your, you get your 240 or whatever that number is per week, 35 a day. Uh, some, some tour managers do it every week. Some tour managers do it every day. Just depends on uh, the preference um where is that coming out of in the budget uh uh it's in the payroll tab okay. yeah yeah we uh i mean i can show you it again here real quick it's a separate tab on there or like a separate thing in the summary page but I, I mean like is that like cash that you're hanging on to throughout the tour or is that just money you're pulling out of the account for the for the per diems or just kind of depends on the tour it depends on the tour you can either pay it out in cash um or it can be just deposited as far as your direct deposit I also want to mention starting this year, um, PDs are taxable. So if you can do cash, definitely run through cash. Wait, they are taxable this year? Yeah. 
Hmm. Oh, we were just talking about how they weren't taxable earlier. I guess we'll, <laughs> I guess we'll see how we'll see how, how hard that is enforced. But yeah, it's pretty lame. Come get that money. Um, Ariana, if you wanted to uh, have your question, state your question real quick. Hey, so I was curious how expenses like additional merch sellers or runners are budgeted, since they might not be necessary for each date. Is there like a designated budget for the duration of the tour or is it pulled from the float as needed? Or like how, how does that work? It's a great question. Um, anyone want to take that one? Nobody, no, no. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm talking when you, when you, when you go through the, each show and each deal has like certain things budgeted, whether it's a runner or merch seller, it usually tells you the cost for it. And so you know what you're getting going into that show. And as you start the, the advanced process to kind of gather um, all that information, you have to make sure to put that together so you can add that to the budget. You might not have those numbers um, right off the bat, but not, they're not going to be super significant on any of these, um, I mean, on these runs really. So, I mean, those numbers can, it'll take over in the contingency or the miscellaneous. So it'll, it'll fall into place and it won't uh, mess your budget. Yeah, typically if you need an additional merch seller, uh, the venue would supply it uh, a lot of the time and add that into the house expenses, correct, guys? Yeah. Uh, well, actually, most of the time, too, I find out, like, they'll take it out of settlement. They, if we really need one. They do what? They take it out of settlement if yeah. we need one. But that's something, like, when I go to a show like L.A. or New York, when I know it's going to be a lot of merch flying off, uh, I'll talk to my merch seller, see if we need one, how many, uh, see if she knows anybody, first of all, because, like, just like we have a network, they usually have a network of people that they can call um, and it might save money that way. And it's someone they know and they trust. So it works for me. If I trust my merch seller and they trust that person, we might save a few bucks and make more money selling. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Um, cool. I have an additional question to that. As far as the runners, um, I was on a tour where the runners came out of the promoters. Is that just how it, how they, um, make the, make the show or you can change it depending on the tour, whether it comes out of uh, the actual artist budget or the promoter budget. So that goes back to looking at the deal memos as well, like yeah. what's included in your cost and your production. Cause it'll say like, it'll say like one runner's included in the production section or like, if it's not, then you're usually paying for that runner. Gotcha. Could be, you know, it depends how much it is to let you know. And cool. also if you're, if you're a support on a tour, a lot of times the headliner gets a runner and if there's an additional runner, it's the, it's a, a cost that gets billed back to the support artist. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. That was a really good question. Um, Stitch had one more stitch. Are you on here about you want to, about the, uh, giving paying support? Yes, sir. Um, my question was, um, when you are support for a headline tour, are you like paying uh, um, the headliner? Are you giving a percentage to them exactly? Like, are, are you having any expenses that's just going to them any, uh, in any way? Justin, you want to take that one? Yeah, so I just did a summer run um, where my artist wanted to save money by not bringing out additional crew, <clears throat> uh, lighting, um, whoever, whatever crew positions we would need. <clears throat> and so instead of bringing them out, we just paid the headliners crew members. We paid them a certain amount of money per show. Um, and then it turned into the, my, my support artist wanting to use the iMag. Um, and so we paid the iMag people a certain amount per show. Generally, if depending on the size of the tour, um, if you're coming in as support, um, you will get something that's on that stage if this artist has video or lighting and you know typically it falls under video lighting and audio um there it's built into the deal with the agents of what you'll be able to use from that tour and then anything outside of that you would have to uh, have to pay out of pocket i think that answers your question hopefully it does no i definitely do appreciate that word um i think i saw you said how do you get float Great, great question there too. Yeah, that was another question of mine. Like pretty much how do you get float? Do you get it pretty much from business management? Do you get that through merch? Do you get, uh, well, Levi did say that he, you get one way to get it is through merch. 
Um, but just, you know, how, how, how do that extra cash come in on the road? Justin, you can take this one too. Sure. You're already on. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, I've seen people use merch uh, before, merch money before, but uh, also a lot of times people like to keep merch money separate. Uh, how I receive funds is via wire. Um, I just let them wire the money to my account. And generally, I don't pull out a ton of cash because a lot of the expenses, um, I end up paying them anyway. So I just keep a tally of what I've spent um, and it just comes out of my account. Um, but generally it's via wire, goes to your bank account and you can pull that money out. And also, again, as a tour manager, make sure that they don't try to tax you for that money. You need to be very, very diligent with the money that's your salary and the money that they're sending you for float because I've had business managers try to offset expenses for the artist by adding that to my money that they paid me as salary at the end of the year for taxes. So just be very sure. cautious with sure. that. And you know, definitely yeah, in a perfect world, you know, ideally you get either a debit card and or a credit card as well from business management. Um, you can pull from that because when it comes to the wiring to your account, you can get kind of tricky, especially if you're using your personal card um, just for your own expenses on the road. So having those tied into the you know, cash on hand amount um, can just kind of be a little frustrating sometimes. With that too, I would say anticipate how much flow you're asking for. Uh, you know, talk to your bus drivers, calculate how much gas you're going to need. And uh, especially if you have multiple, if you have a box truck driver and a bus driver, just anticipate how much you're taking out. That's going to hit your account. And as soon as you take it out, tally it in like a Google sheet or however you're going to take your notes, just be right on top of it. Mm -hmm. Word. Appreciate that, fellas. Yep, appreciate you. Um, let's take a couple more. Uh, Danny, if you want to mute yourself, I saw you had a question earlier. Yeah, um, I guess I, I was trying to find out the balance, you know, in the order of priorities for you guys. Um, who do you try to keep the happiest in the compromise between putting on a good show, a good quality show, keeping it under budget, and and making everybody you know, making your crew comfortable and the artists comfortable. How do you prioritize who to make happy at the end of the day, you know, in order of, you know, again, priority? Is it the artist first and then management and then crew? Or how, how, do, you, how do you see that, that delicate balance? So no, that's a really good question. Um, I, I guess I could start it off. I think there is no perfect answer. It's all about the gig. And in the end of the day, the job of a tour manager is just juggling. All of those things you talked about, you have to juggle them all. It's almost like you have to just keep everyone at a certain line. When it starts to get down, maybe you compromise this part to make this part happier, vice versa. Um, obviously keeping the artist and manager happy, but also managing their expectations. Cause let's say they want the crew to make less than you know, you don't want to be touring out there with an unhappy crew, then you, you know, there, there's a lot of things that go into it. Anyone else feel free to hop in here too. I've had artists tell me, I pay you. So like, basically you need to do what I tell you to do. Um, and it, it's at times gone against what their manager is saying, but always remember who's, who your money is coming from that artist. It's not coming from management not coming from the business manager, that artist is telling them what to give you. So I, I personally keep, make sure that my artist is always happy. Um, but like Chad said, think, it's, a, uh, it's a juggling act. I'm a, okay. I think too, having um, a PM and a TM together um, <clears throat> kind of helps keep certain people more happier. Like if I had a TM, then his focus would be the artist. And my focus is the artist per se, but I, I can cater towards the production crew so that I can kind of keep them level headed. So I think it's the artist PM artist, but I think when you have, yeah. say that again, I can't hear you. The so. PM is a man of the people, the tour manager is like the artists. The artist, right. When so when you have both on the same tour, it kind of helps to keep things. Yeah, like basically your your PM and your TM, should, your, your TM should be like your liaison from the A party and your B, and your PM should be the liaison from the B party and everything should run between them and now everything trickles down to the crew. But at the end of the day, I think that 
um, everything kind of falls in line together. And if you keep, if your artist is happy, management's going to be happy because their goal is to keep the artist happy. And if your artist is happy, then the crew must be doing a good job on the show because otherwise the artists wouldn't be happy. So it all kind of falls, falls together. Um, but as a tour manager, obviously it's not even only, only who pays you, but who employs you. And like management could tell the artist to fire you if he wants to, but at the end of the day, if the artist yeah. really likes you. He's not going to, he's not going to fire you. So if you're listening to them, um, you're usually in a pretty good place. Yeah. But also the managers have a little bit more take than uh, most people, you know, might think. So they're, I've seen, they're, I've they're seen scenarios where, you know, like the artist loves someone, but the manager can convince them, oh, but we need to go with this guy. He's just more experienced. He knows more. Artists have so much on their plate that in the end of the day, they're just going to be like, all right, you know, whatever you say, you're my manager. I need to go make a record or shoot this music video. So it's all, you also got to keep management happy. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting um, middle ground there. Anyone else have anything else? Before? I guess, I guess it just, just quickly, my underlying question there too, had to do also with that longevity in this business, because um, I, I don't know if you guys value more. I mean, what's worked for you like nine, you know, out of 10 times, whether you, you know, focus your relationship and keeping that, that bridge intact with management or do you actually just end up, you know, catering more to the artist and keeping that artist happy because management comes and goes or is it the other way around? Because, you know, that's kind of like, you know, I'm, I'm a front of house guy that kind of got into tour managing and, and that's, that's a bit of, of the toughest thing that I've found is basically what I asked because, you know, as a, as a front of house, there's not really many relationships I have to keep and usually came from the artist. So I didn't really have to deal with management too much. Now, as a tour manager, it's like we're dealing with money and the artist's money and the management's vision when it comes to their money and how the money is going to be spent. So, you know, it, that, that also came from, from the, the side of like, okay, how do you compromise? Do you really compromise the quality of the show by cutting corners here and there? Do you listen to management? How far do you push? You know, it's, I, I guess it's a lot of... Uh, it's a very complicated question, but I, you know, I guess I wanted your take on that, especially when it comes to longevity in the business, you know? It is, it is a complicated question, but it, that's, that's definitely the juggle um, because you're working with that artist and you want to keep the relationship great. But if you're working with a manager that, that works for Maverick, who has everyone that can refer you to other clients and, and help your longevity in the industry, it's just definitely a juggle. But just the same as your crew guys, you know, not to, not to piss on them at all, um, because you want to make sure that, you know, I've had crew guys or, you know, musicians refer me for tour management positions. So it's definitely a juggle. And it just goes, a lot of this stuff goes case by case because it's it's just, it's a constant juggle. You're always juggling personalities and people's feelings. You know, sometimes managers of artists also, um, you know, per se, like a record label or, you know, the management company, they have multiple artists. Um, so catering to the managers on that side of things for longevity is just because, you know, they they have a team of artists that they already intact with instead of trying to find or talk to managers individually. And I think one of the great ways that Chad grew this company um, was because of the relationships he had with managers and managers, you know, they talk, you know, um, artists don't really, they don't focus on that, you know, that's why they have managers. So I think longevity definitely um, will just push on that management side. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, that's a great question though, man. That's, it's, it's an important, like I said, I think it's going to differentiate on, on every gig. Um, and the end of the day, you got to try and keep them both happy. So, um, appreciate that. Uh, let's appreciate see. you guys. Uh, Douglas, I saw you just mentioned uh, master tour. Um, I think we're covering that on session six. Uh, the last one of the last ones. Um, Going in there for sure. Yep. Uh, Sam asked if we use things like Venmo and Cash App with float money. Do any of you guys do that? I haven't personally. Nobody. Yeah. Um, I've only ever had to use it just to pay out a security guy on the road because he had some funky. <laughs> That's funny. Like it. <laughs> Always security and your drummer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Ebony mentioned Bobnet as a useful tool for vendors. Uh, that's true. It's a good point. Um, Malachi had a question about how is buyout factored in? 
Um, I guess we could take that and then we'll probably wrap since it's right at 3 p.m. Who wants to take that? I'll take it. Buyouts, you can, uh, buyouts come, uh, depending on the show. I mean, typically if it's a, like a one-off, like a college show, you, you're going to buy out or they'll do catering for you. It really depends what you work out in the advance as far as like, usually they just have a meal for you for sound check or for, and, and, or for, uh, for dinner. So if they're giving you meals, they're probably not going to give you a buyout. And if they aren't, then you should be able to get a buyout for your crew. And sometimes they'll let you set the amount and sometimes they won't. But usually they get that in cash and the tour manager when you show up to the venue for sound check, and then you distribute it to the crew um, in cash and get it all situated. And then I want to go spend that however they want. It's like an additional per diem. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, uh, we all appreciate you. Um, Next week we are going to dive into logistics, which should be a should be a good one since there's so many different logistical things that go into touring. Um, appreciate everyone for coming by. We'll be back here again at 1 p.m. next week. So uh, awesome! Later, everybody.